welcome back to the F1 2018 Career Mode Season 2. You join me for the Spanish Grand Prix following on from our wonderful second place we had last time out at the Azerbaijan Grand Prix. And this is a circuit that suits me uh, a lot better than others on the, on the calendar. Very much more of a chassis circuit, but I've sort of developed over the years of playing these F1 games... Um, that I just got better at this circuit over time. It was one that I never really used to enjoy, and since the remodel in 2017, I've really enjoyed it. We got a DRS upgrade for this weekend. Um, we've got a 1,000 resource points, so I'm just sort of having a look, seeing what's available. It's a lot of minor upgrades, in all fairness, so it's just really figuring out what way um, I want to go. But if you see there, if we go down on the chassis tree with that weight reduction, we'll gain access pretty quickly to two sort of ultimate upgrades. So it's just sort of figuring out how I want to proceed with that. Uh, but nonetheless, we're going to carry on with the current engine and our current development path. Let's go into qualifying. Here we are at the circuit to Barcelona, Catalonia for the start of today's qualifying session. It won't be long now until we're ready to join the action down at trackside. So here we are, Spanish Grand Prix in the Force India with our big old powerful engine that helped us out in Baku. And it's going to help us here down this massive straight heading towards turn one, 211 miles an hour before we hit the brakes, going into the sweeping right-hander of one and two, using the green bit of the track that is available to us. It did put me on a bad line to run through turn three, and I've had to go out there on the less grippy stuff. You see the car squirming around, but coming across the first sector split, Brendan Hartley says the fastest of 1.19.5 at the moment, and I'm sort of playing around with the ERS again. I'm sort of trying to get to a point where I can have ERS over the full lap and not sort of run out of ERS juice as we cross the line. So we're still max and high at the moment. Hamilton setting the pace then on an 18-3. So that's what we need to aim for. Did very well there through that left-hander. Sometimes with the setups that I run, it spits the car out. I'm off the throttle for more than I wanted to be through the long uphill right-hander. But we're going to come across the second split momentarily. And we are four tenths up on Lewis Hamilton. But it's the slow technical bit of the track where the Force India just falls down a little bit and took too much curb, unsettled the car through the long right-hander. So let's see where we're going to be in comparison to Hamilton as we go through the right-hander. Then the chicane, which I've got completely wrong on the braking, and I've missed the apex completely. So that's cost us a hell of a lot of time. We're going to have to try and make that up on another run. Through the final corner, flat to the floor, hot lap mode, DRS open, and it's a 1.18.8. Puts me behind Hamilton and Perez, but about half a second ahead of Pierre Gasly. So that actually dropped me down to 13th by the time I actually went out for a second run. So let's take a look at this one. Hopefully this lap is going to be a hell of a lot better as we're on overtake as we run up to the first corner again, 211, before pumping the brakes into turn one a little bit better through the corners. And that put me in a much better position for through turn three, slightly off the throttle, but then much more planted. You see the Delta shoot up as we're three tenths up as we cross the first sector split. And it's a purple first sector. It's the fastest of the session so far as we now down to high and through turn four and down towards turn five. Just missing the apex, the car drifting wide, but on the power, using the curb, cost the time against the Delta. But we're coming up to a Toro Rosso. Hopefully that doesn't hamper the end of my lap as I get there, the left hand, and not quite as good as I got it last lap around, but much more committed run through the right hand. I did lose a little bit of time on the exit due to a running wide. We're still two tenths up, though, on provisional pole position. And now we just need to nail it through the final sector. Big chunk of curb once again on the lead up to the long right-hander. But much more committed through the corner. I'm careful with our throttle placement. Hartley getting closer and closer. This is where we're going to make up most of our time. If we get the chicane correct, which we have done, fully committed through acceleration. We're over a second up compared to our last lap. Is it going to be provisional pole position across the line? No. We dropped to P4. Three tenths off provisional pole. We're losing way too much time in that final sector. So we go to the timing board here. You can see Verstappen has seven tenths on us through the final sector. But we're four tenths up through the first sector. And then near enough identical through the middle. But that's the way it's played out. We're way ahead of Perez. There's still two minutes to go in the session. We're going to flick on over to the Grand Prix. And wait for the grid rundown for the Spanish Grand Prix. Good afternoon from a very familiar setting. It's race day here in Spain, and with everything still to play for in the championship battle, there's no room for mistakes in a Grand Prix that's well known for creating them. It 
It's a sellout crowd of 140,000 here today as we await lights out for the 730 meter sprint down to turn one at this 2.9 mile racetrack. Overtaking is challenging through these 16 corners, but there's still a lot of high speed excitement to be found, including the flat out turn three and the terrifying blind right of turn nine. With me today, of course, is Anthony Davidson. Let's talk about the captain. That was a great podium in the last race. So can they keep that momentum going this weekend? It's always nice to come into a Grand Prix weekend on a high, but your expectations are based much more on your practice and qualifying runs. So it's the momentum from those sessions that they'll be hoping to carry into the race today. Well then, after an exciting qualifying session yesterday, let's take a look at how the cars line up. Daniel Ricciardo starts from pole position today, with Sebastian Vettel starting alongside. Looking down the rest of the grid, we have Verstappen, Hamilton, Nico Hülkenberg, and Perez, Raikkonen, Sainz, the captain, and Valtteri Bottas, Rojan, Magnussen, Fernando Alonso, and Hartley, Gasly, Stroll, Stoffel van Dorn, and Charles Leclerc, Ericsson, and Sergei Sorotkin rounds off the grid. And now it's time to head down to the track. So as you saw by the grid rundown, we actually fell down to ninth in that final part of qualifying. So a little bit unfortunate, but nonetheless, we have to make the best of a bad situation. And I feel as if the Spanish Grand Prix has always been one where I've been very good on strategy and tyre saving, been able to make that up in the race. Here's the setup. Seven on the front, six on the rear for the wings. Of course, the strategy is supers to uh, two sets of the yellow striped soft compound tyre. But yeah, 7.6 on the front. Get the front end into some of those long sweeping corners because that's always a challenge here. Um, as you're starting qualifying, that's probably where I lost quite a bit of time. 85.70, you'll tend to find that's what I tend to run on the transmission quite heavily. It's just... It's what I found comfortable. Um, a lot more on the, uh, on the front toe on the tyres. Again, just trying to get that nose in. Brings the car in quite nicely through the long corners and then the suspension quite soft. This track's got big curbs and a lot of bumps. So 83 and 60 on the pressure, then the bias. Tyres I then leave completely the same. 23, 21.5 for the rears and the distribution. We have gone for one click towards the rear. Never really go towards the front on ballast. I like to reduce that understeer, not, you know, bring it in as it were, but we build with the lights for the Spanish Grand Prix. Five red lights are on, five red lights are out, not a long hold, but we are underway up to Rich. We've had a hell of a lot of wheel spin off the start. Grosjean going to go past us there. We're already down to 10th and 11th. There's Valtteri Bottas there. There's a clear path for us on the left-hand side, braking on the kerb gingerly because that can spit the car out uncontrollably. We ride the kerb on the inside, back up into ninth place. Perez, Raikkonen and Sainz looking very slow. We're going to squeeze the car to the inside, plant the throttle, and that's a triple overtake on Sainz, Raikkonen and my teammate Perez, and that puts us immediately up into sixth. So we've gained five places from our run down towards turn one. Verstappen leads the way from Daniel Ricciardo. Lewis Hamilton up in third. Then there's the championship leader, Vettel, in fourth. Nico Hülkenberg punching up there in the Renault in fifth, and we are, of course, up to sixth position. So now it's all about trying to keep pace with these front runners because the minute we get a sniff against Hulkenberg in a straight line we'll be able to overtake him Verstappen sets the pace with a 21-5 we do a 22 flat going um, going across the line and Perez has got uh, Perez has got slipstream against me actually and he's going to go down the inside of turn one initially I let him make the move but he ran wide through the remainder of the corner I've had to go to the green outside strip otherwise I've been in the gravel trap just there but uh, Perez tried to make the move. I was more than happy to let him go through if he felt he was going to be quicker to try and catch up to Nico Hülkenberg. But he couldn't make the move stick as we now come out the final corner. This is where we're going to see a lot of the overtaking runs. It's relatively difficult to overtake here um, in uh, the Spanish Grand Prix. But Perez pulls to the inside. Now that he's got DRS and he's pulled clean ahead of me and onto the racing line into turn one. A little bit out of control there. As you saw on the braking zones, we close back up to him as we just have a look. Tyres not really i mean they're okay but they're not going to be good a couple of laps from now so it's a good thing we're going to be coming in sooner rather than later but perez up ahead of me now into sixth place hopefully i can stick with him and he can pull me towards that leading pack because hulkenberg hasn't really dropped off at all and to be honest the mercedes of hamilton is overperforming there because that car i believe well yeah is lower than the force india the the quote-unquote junior team is uh, better than the works team and here comes raikkonen 
out of the final corner. We'd pull to the inside, but Raikkonen just goes steaming past me. We're going to go into the slipstream and try and re-overtake him into turn one. We take a look down the inside, but that door very firmly shuts. The Ferrari engine, of course, still one of the most powerful. Once we get our upgrade in Monaco, we will overtake them with our um, our Mercedes power unit in the back of this Force India. So we're going to take the opportunity now that we've been overtaken by Perez and Raikkonen to just save the fuel, save the ERS. And Science is actually going to have a look at us as we've got it wrong through turn four. Science puts himself on the outside of turn five. We break late, push him wide. He's then got to turn in. Made a minor contact there with Valtteri Bottas by the looks of things. But yeah, so we defend from... Carlos Sainz. We now move on to the end of lap six. Cars have made their pit stops. I'm going to be making the first pit stop of the Force India boys. Perez, of course, carries on. So there's Hamilton, Vettel and Hulkenberg in the pits, as well as myself in for our first pit stop of the Grand Prix. Hamilton going to the soft compound tyre. Going to be on the same strategy to us. So is Vettel. Vettel's been held up there in the pits. Is he going to lose out, actually, to Hulkenberg? Yes, he is. Vettel's had a shocking pit stop. Now we're getting held as cars go through. We got held unnecessarily there, I do feel, but very unfortunate pit stop there for Vettel. He's lost out drastically to uh, Nico Hulkenberg. And he's also lost out to Kimi Raikkonen by the loss of things. Because he's now down the road. And we've only got Grosjean and one of the McLarens behind me by the looks of things. So we've now just got to get the tyres up to temperature. And try and close back up to the field ahead. Because they're of course going to be trying to overtake traffic. I'm sure there's going to be more cars in the pit lane now. Which there are. It looks as if we're going to have a Renault of science and that is Valtteri Bottas coming out on soft tyres. Can we try and get past him into turn one? Bottas on colder rubber, but he's got the inside line, but we know we're able to make the move successfully around uh, around the outside of Valtteri Bottas. So we've stayed ahead of him. We nearly got under, uh, overcut there by the Mercedes driver. This car's not coming up to temperature. Perez up the road has also lost out to Raikkonen by the looks of things for the two lap uh, or the one lap undercut that Raikkonen's had on him. Or was it two lap? I'll be honest, I'm not sure I wasn't really paying that much of attention. Professional! Anyway, we're now closing up to the back of Marcus Ericsson. Here's where we're going to be encountering the traffic who haven't pitted yet. Of course, Ericsson started on the soft tyre. Thank you very much. We're going to get past you before turn nine. So it would have been very detrimental to try and follow that Sauber through the right-hander. And we've got Perez battling a Williams here of Sergei Sorokin. And appears to be losing time, uh, but Perez gets Sorokin on traction. But thankfully, some of the back markers are proving to be difficult for uh, the AI around me. So we're going to try and get past them and close up on them. So Sorokin there, DRS. Uh, and of course, Sorokin's engine is no slouch. It is that Williams engine that we were upgrading. But no, we're going to go past with a bit of rich and overtake into turn one. Nicely does it. Get it all slowed down. And we've really caught nicely up to the back of Sergio Perez. And now Bottas is going to have to spend a bit of time behind Sergio Sorokin and lose out on a bit of time to us. So here comes Perez. In fact, no, he's got Raikkonen locking up just ahead of him. As we go uh, into the final sector, those Vettel has got ahead of Raikkonen. And Raikkonen appears to be going slow. I've lost complete control of the car over the kerb. That was a scary moment where I nearly binned it. But we kept it under control. And we're now back up into the points as Magnussen has made another pit stop. Onto another set of soft tyres, I believe. So maybe he's going soft, soft supers at the end, I would assume. But Perez has now made it past Kimi Raikkonen there. Uh, that was into turn one. So we're now trying to get past Raikkonen, who's very slow at this stage of the Grand Prix. He must have some kind of problem that we're not aware of. He pulls to the inside to defend through turn four. So we're going to have to try and carry around the outside. Raikkonen got the earlier acceleration, though. But we're going to stick it down the inside of him into turn five. Kimi turns in, left the width of a Formula One car available as he went into the apex. Now. And we were able to capitalise on that. Bit of wheel banging, bit of side pod collision, but... You know, sometimes you do have to be a little bit bold as Ricardo now sets the pace with a 21 flat. And you've got Vell up behind the Sauber of Charles Leclerc. And you've also got uh, Perez getting involved there at the back of him. So this is now the battle for six as Leclerc holds the inside. Vettel's got past him. Leclerc holds the inside versus Perez. And he's pushing Perez back into me. Can we try and make a move on our teammate into turn five? Thought better of it because Perez was looking at the back of Charles Leclerc. We're going to get the better acceleration. But where we've gone wide onto the kerb. We weren't able to make the move stick. And now Vettel, unfortunately, is going to escape down the road as both of us force India guys stuck behind the Sauber man. As we go through turn nine, we get, of course, the dirty air. And the understeer, a bit of gravel on the tyres, unfortunately, as we try to uh, make the move stick. Perez breezes past with DRS on Leclerc. And we are not able to get past him this time around. So we're going to have to sit behind the Sauber until at least the home straight. As Perez slowly pulls away. So we've got, the, to be honest, the leaders aren't too far away. But, you know, we've 
had to, we've had to fight through the traffic where they have probably got a bit luckier with the strategy and the pit stop phases. But yeah, you can see Leclerc carrying on. Raikkonen closing back up behind me. So back with the DRS open. Leclerc has DRS against uh, Perez, but he's not going to have anywhere near the power that we have in the Force India. Saying that, we're not actually gaining on him that much. We, oh, we come from a long way back into turn one. I don't think Leclerc appreciated that in any way, shape or form. Could have been uh, considered quite dirty, that move. But we had to make it stick to be able to stick with Perez and Vettel. We're still realistically in the early stages of the Grand Prix. We've had to take a big cut now onto lap 17 where we've got Vettel, Hülkenberg, Hamilton and Sergio in the pits there. So they're all coming in. We got the preferential treatment last time around. This time around it is Perez. We're now having to make our tyres last uh, one lap longer or two laps longer. I don't know, but this set of boots has definitely gone longer than Sergio Perez's set of boots. So now we're up to rich and high on the fuel and ERS respectively. And we are now going to try and push on this inlap and come in as we take out the bollard. And I've had to tell the team that we're coming in because we were supposed to go one lap longer, but didn't really fancy it. Not really attacking the pit lane line with too much gusto either, but we are in for our final pit stop of the Grand Prix. I didn't feel the tyres were going to go another lap. That in lap, while I turned up the engine a little bit, it certainly didn't feel too quick. As there goes Gasly. Hamilton on a set of medium tyres now. Stroll, Vettel. All the guys who came in a lap ago are on mediums. A very interesting strategy by all the cars around me then. So they're having to run the harder compound of tyre for the end stage of the race. So they've gone supers, soft, then mediums. We've come in a lap later... And uh, we've gone at supers, soft, and soft. So, if there was ever a moment to strike, it's now. While their tyres, they struggle to get them up to temperature. And they don't have as much grip as me. We're on the softer tyres for this final stint of the Grand Prix. Can we make it past Perez, Hülkenberg, and Vettel? Those were the three cars that we were just behind before the pit stop phase started. So, there's our objective. We now go on to our first free lap. Um... Coming out of the pit lane. Standard mix and medium on the RS. So let's see what we can do. Into turn one, of course. We've got Hartley and Van Dorn battling out. Pushing each other off. So I was going to hope to have a nice clear air lap. To be able to set blistering lap times. But unfortunately, I've had to make probably a questionable move on Van Dorn. Looking back at it. But Van Dorn was unsure where he wanted to place his McLaren. And um, to be honest, I can't lose too much time. Because I need to catch up to the three cars that I mentioned before. So we're now half a lap later. And we're tucked up behind the rear wing of the Toro Rosso of Brendan Hartley through turn 9. We can even afford to go into lean here and save a bit of fuel as we've got the superior straight line speed down the inside of turn 10. Collision with Brendan Hartley. Tiny bit of wheel banging, nothing ventured, nothing gained. Through into the final sector. 13 laps to go if we include the one we're on. Lap 21 now. We do a personal best of the Grand Prix onto a 21-4. We're up into P7 and we are 1.3 seconds behind Sergio Perez, we are closing down our teammate. Look at the amount of curve I'm using on the exit of turn five. We saved a bit of fuel going through the traffic, and now we're using rich and high to try and catch Perez. The difference between the medium and the soft tyre is astronomical here, because Perez was probably quicker than me on the soft compound tyre, hence why it led me for most of the race. But we're going to make a big lunging move on Perez, who completely locks his wheels going into turn 10. We had set the fastest middle sector of the Grand Prix so far. And we're going to come across the line with a 21-0. So we're nearly on the pace that the uh, that the Red Bulls were setting up the front in that middle stint. And we're up past Perez now who can't come back at me in a straight line. And a couple of laps later, we have burned a lot of our fuel and gone into the minus actually. But we have now caught up with Nico Hülkenberg. So now we're up to rich, up to high. DRS open and look at the speed differential between the Renault engine and the Mercedes we have in the back of this car. Beautifully executed. into the Onto the dirty line into turn one. Hulkenberg fought it for as long as he could. But he couldn't quite keep me behind going into turn one. And now eight laps to go. We're going to have to consider turning the engine down. Which is exactly what I did. And Hulkenberg now kept with me through the middle part of the lap there. The, the, the power parts of the circuit is where I excel. But Hulkenberg definitely better over the technical bit. He's got past me going into turn one, but he locks his front wheel. Well, I barely got the car slowed down as is, but Hulkenberg really lost the position to me going into turn one. And I had to turn the engine and the ERS down because I realised that Vettel, with him being 8.6 seconds up the road at the end of lap 29, um, 
and it was it was less than that a few laps ago. So the, the performance of the Ferrari outweighs the tyre advantage that I was getting. Plus, as we get later on into the stint now, my tyres are going to be giving up, and it's going to be a close run to the line versus Perez and Hulkenberg. But, you know, these were guys that I've been behind for most of the Grand Prix, and so I'll be ahead of them again on strategy, as I said, as Perez slingshots past me into turn one. Is he going to be able to get that slowed down? More to the point, is he going to be able to get it slowed down with me up his inside contact between the teammates? Me just reminding Perez, like, look, you may have won last time out, but I am just as good as you. Daniel Ricciardo wins the Spanish Grand Prix. Uh, Velm's got past Hamilton up into third place. Impressive stuff, but, um, yeah, Ricciardo going to lead home Verstappen in a Red Bull 1-2, and we are going to lead home on some very worn-out soft compound tyres, it must be said. We're going to lead home uh, teammate Sergio Perez and Nico Hülkenberg there. Vettel is going to extend his championship lead, of course, but once again, a clever race from my personal opinion. Being able to get another set of the softer compound of tyres last and being able to utilise that and gain more points than I was expecting in Spain. That's the end of the race. We'll see you in part for me. And now it's time to wind down and celebrate after that fantastic Grand Prix. Here they come, your top three, out onto the podium. Daniel Ricciardo wins the Spanish Grand Prix, followed up by Max Verstappen with a Red Bull 1-2. Chassis circuit, chassis car, it makes the most sense. Sebastian Vettel brings it home, P3 for the Scuderia, extending his championship lead once again. Hamilton in P4. Then we th only 35 seconds back come home in P5, beating out Perez and Hülkenberg there on strategy. Like I said, Valtteri Bottas fought through to 8th, but he was nowhere compared to his teammate this afternoon. Carlos Sainz dropped it down to 9th after that contact with Bottas earlier on in the Grand Prix. And Kevin Magnussen able to bring it up from P12 to get inside the top 10 for the Haas team. Good result for Magnussen. Alonso on the fringe points in 11th. Gasly up to 12th and 15th. Raikkonen ended up down in 13th. Terrible afternoon. He finished some 30 seconds behind his teammate there. And Stroll, Hartley, Van Dorn, Sorotkin and Ericsson round out the finishers there. With results of the Drivers' Championship, Max Verstappen has now pulled ahead um, and has gone above uh, both Force India drivers there. So where I was saying last time out, we were ahead of them. He's now reversed that. He's now ahead of us. So myself and Perez there. But Raikkonen, even then more so, we leveled out in fourth and fifth because Raikkonen dropped to sixth. We as a team then have 97 points. We're, we lost that big time to Red Bull this time out, but we retained the position and we're only 13 points off the back of Mercedes. And if we continue with our rate of development, we can definitely look and become the most dominant Mercedes-powered car on the grid. But let's get back to the paddock and have a chat with Claire. Great work out there today. How do you think it went? Did you struggle to get through all that traffic today? Some of it was a challenge. You saw with the placement of uh, certainly with some of the cars, but having the power advantage definitely helps. So talk us through what happened between you and your rival today. I mean, essentially, he had the pace and I had the strategy, and I think it just... I had to push my way past him. It was more like dodgems than Formula One today, wasn't it? Yeah, I mean, you know, we've just gone over the footage, but, you know, there's there's nothing that a few little nudges aren't really going to uh, gonna affect, right? You left some body work out there on the track. Were you struggling for grip? Now, I can't recall if I actually gave an answer to this one there. Um, I did try that. It's nothing that won't buff out. Um, thinking that would be a showmanship point. answer, but it wasn't. It was a forcing your rep decrease answer. So that's, you know, that's never fun. Um... Anyway, I must have missed when I actually added this, but I've actually gone for a tyre wear upgrade on the chassis, which you can see here. So I've got 938 resource points left, and we're also going to get the uh, the weight reduction upgrade, because that will then come into effect for Monaco. So weight reduction, tyre wear, it's all going to work out, because that's going to push us ahead of Mercedes and almost up there with Renault. Essentially, we should become the third best car, or at least equal with, uh, with Renault there, so... The development for this team initially started off bad for the start of the season with our winter upgrades, but since then we've just on this this roll of momentum, like snowballing downhill essentially, um, as in picking up the snowball uh, performances going uphill. You you get where I'm going with this. 
Uh, but thank you everyone who has watched so far in this video and so far for season two. I hope you have enjoyed. Leave a like if you did and comment any feedback down below. Next time out, we do have the Monaco Grand Prix, one of the more interesting races we definitely have on the calendar each and every year. But I do find myself still getting better at the track and being able to commit more. And when you can get the final sector of Monaco right, it's one of the most rewarding uh, moments. I'm sure I'll talk about that in the Monaco video. Uh, subscribe and enable the notifications to be kept up to date with the content that comes to the channel. And I will see you all next time.